We're making messy, abstract watercolor backgrounds in Procreate this week. Perfect for website graphics, social media posts, and stationary designs. The color palette for this project is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen and let's begin. Okay, so you've probably noticed that we're using a larger canvas size than we usually do in tutorials this week, and there's a really good reason why, so we're going to get into that in just a minute. So let's first set our background color. So tap on the background colors layer, and I want you to pick any color you'd like. I'm going to go with just a very subtle gray. The point of this is you just wanna be able to see white on top of it, so you're going to need enough contrast so the white stands out, but I don't like going too dark, that way I can still see what I'm doing, so just, a random light gray is totally fine. Okay, next what we need to do is on layer one, we're going to select true white, so double tap where the white is, so you have true white now, and we're going to fill the entire canvas with white. Once we have this in here, you're going to select it, and down here make sure uniform is selected, and as you scale it up, you're going to see the width and the height listed over here, and you wanna scale it up until you get to 1500 pixels. I got my 1500 pixels, deselect, and then select again and just move it into place. So I'm going to center this on my canvas. Now we're good to go. So hopefully you can see this white square. I'm going to make my background color just a little bit darker so you can see everything better on screen. So I want you to keep in mind that we're eventually going to apply a clipping mask and lock everything into the size of the smaller square. But we wanna have a larger canvas because in Procreate, whenever you bring in textures or you're working, if anything goes outside the edges of your canvas, it gets cropped off. It's cut off and then you can't get it back. So the way we're doing this is so we have extra room outside of what's going to end up being our final canvas. So we can play around with our textures and we can move things around. And we just have way more flexibility that way and we can get outcomes that are more desirable than if we're just confined to a regular canvas. So now we're going to start creating our abstract art. I'm going to be using my messy watercolor brush set for this, which is actually a set of eight different brush sets. It's a massive, massive set. There's over 200 brushes in here, so you have plenty to choose from and to work with. But if you don't have the set yet and you just want to play around and see if it's for you, I do have a free messy watercolor brush sampler and I'll leave it right in the video description. You can download it and you can play around with that one first. I'm going to be using the full set for this. I'm going to go into my messy shapes number two category first and you can see these are all abstract watercolor texture shapes. And we're going to stamp them in and figure out our layout. So ahead of time, I'm already thinking I want like a swooping, some swooping action going right here. And then to have just a little bit of swooping over here maybe, and then the rest is just going to kind of blend together. That way I don't have too many focal areas, but the main focal area is just gonna be this bottom corner. And whenever you're creating these, my my best advice when you're choosing a color palette is to choose an analogous color palette. And by analogous, I mean colors that are next to each other in the color wheel. So you can see I've got this pink and orange, so I'm kind of living in this section over here. That way you don't get any colors like a red and a green that are mixing together and then you get these ugly browns where they're overlapping each other. So that's why analogous, you're always going to get really pleasing results. All right, I'm going to grab, let's see, you can choose any of these to start with. I'm going to grab shape 64, and I want this bottom to be really bold, so I'm going to go with the hot pink for this. Make sure we're putting it on a brand new layer. All these textures are gonna go on their own layers, and I'm just going to stamp it in with my finger. Whenever you're working with stamps and Procreate, you wanna stamp them in with your finger so you can guarantee full opacity. And I'm just going to pop this down in this corner and then we'll see about size once we start putting some extra elements in. So I want the swooping look. So I'm going to create another layer right on top and let's find another stamp. I'm gonna try shape 72. Once again, I'm on that new layer. I still have my hot pink and I'll pop that one in there. This gives me more of that swooping feel. And you can see now I can go outside of what's going to be my final canvas size, and I won't lose that. So if I change my mind later and I'm like, oh, I wanna move it down just a little bit, I still have that information from my stamp and it just makes it so much easier. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my softer pink now and we're going to add in a little bit of filler 
And for that, I'm going to use, let's try shape number 60. You can use any stamps you want. I'm just kind of randomly grabbing stamp and, stamps and seeing where they can go and how they can fit into my master plan. Where this one is interacting with this one, I want a softer transition. So I'm going to smudge this hard edge into the softer color. So it looks like they're blending together like real watercolor. So I'm going to grab my smudge tool and head into this layer. So grab your smudge brush and I like in the messy extras brush set grabbing the bloom and bleed and I'm just going to push that edge out a little bit and soften it up. I like having a mixture of hard and soft edges. It just gives a way more realistic look. All right, so let's take care of this top corner. I mentioned before that I wanted kind of a swooping look right here. So let's bring something up there. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my orange or my peachy color. I'm going to grab shape 68 for that. So stamp it in with your finger. I'm going to make this brush a little bit larger. Plant it right up here. I am going to need an extra texture right there to fill in that gap. Let's create a brand new layer underneath the one that we just did and grab a soft pink again. I think I'm going to try shape 73. And you can flip these too. So I like this edge, but I want it on the other side. So I'm just going to flip it horizontally. And I can pop that in. Since I've got that motion, I want to keep the energy going in the same direction. Okay, and I think that the orange can blend a little bit better with the pink if I change the blend mode. So on the orange layer, I'm going to hit the little N and drag this up to multiply. I'm going to smudge this edge a little bit on the orange one. I'm going to keep the hard edge along this side. I think that feels good. And then down here, I want to add in some more orange. That way I don't just have the orange in the upper right. I want it towards the middle as well. So I'll create a brand new layer, grab my orange, I'm going to head into my blooms and I'm going to grab this bloom 11. It's one of the larger ones so I like that for taking up space when you need some extra filler. So I'm getting this subtle pop of orange to kind of tie all these colors together. And I can change the blend mode on that to multiply as well. And then I need to continue the swooping action so I'm going to grab another orange to play off of that kind of diagonal symmetry in a way. So create a brand new layer and I'm going to try shape number 69. Pop that in, flip it horizontally. Okay and let's change the blend mode of this one to multiply. But I want this one to be behind that first one that we made. So I'm going to drag it all the way down just to soften how rich that was. And I, I want to make this hard edge blend into the orange a little bit. So I'm going to find that one and just smudge this edge into the orange a bit. I'm still using the Bloom and Bleed as my smudge brush. And I can soften that edge of the orange one too if it's feeling a little too hard. I think I want to add one extra background of pink because I have some white poking through here and I'd rather not have that. So I'm going to put another pink, just soft texture back here. So I'm going to come all the way down, tap on the white square, create a brand new layer, switch to pink. Let's head into Messy Shapes 01. So these are your more recognizable shapes here rather than abstract shapes. And I've got some curves, some soft curved ones down here that I think could work nice for that area. So I'm going to grab shape 47, stamp that in. I can add a blend mode of multiply to this that so I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to flip it horizontally and I can just pop it right in here and that way it's still taking on the motion of everything else that's going on over there. So we have all of our texture and I want to add in some paint splatter now to make it feel even messier. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top. I'm going to change my color to the hot pink and we'll head into messy splatters. I'm going to grab splatter 18. I need it to be a little bit bigger and then pop it right along this edge. You can even warp it if you wanted to. I'll show you what that would look like. So warp, drag that like that a little bit. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply so it's a little more obvious. And I always like smudging a few of my splatter marks. That way it looks like they splattered on areas that were still a little bit wet that hadn't dried yet. So you get these like little blooms of color. And now let's add in some orange splatter. So create a brand new layer. Choose orange, change the blend mode to multiply. 
I'm going to grab splatter three. I'm going to reflect it. And this one's just going to kind of follow down here. Okay, and then smudge some of these areas out as well. You don't need to go too crazy. I just do a few. I want to just add a little bit of random splatter up here just to balance it all out. So I'm going to do that with orange. So create a brand new layer, change the blend mode to multiply. I still have orange selected. I've got splatter 05 right here that I know doesn't have like a ton of splatter to it. There's it's just a few dots. Whenever I need subtle splatter, that's the one. It's kind of my go-to. And I'll smudge it a few of these too. So we've got our abstract watercolor now. It's just messy, beautiful color, beautiful textured color. So now I wanna show you how we take this and you can recolor it and use it for a bunch of different purposes. So we have all of these layers and we can adjust them and move them and we've got room outside of our canvas where we can tweak things. Nothing is cropped off, so that's super helpful. So I like grouping all of these together and keeping a copy in case I change my mind later. I've got all that work has already been done. I'm going to duplicate this group and turn off the original. This duplicated group, I'm going to flatten it. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose flatten. Now it's just that color together and I can tap on that layer's thumbnail and choose clipping mask. And now we can kind of get a preview of how that looks. And if you want to move anything around, you can still select it and move it around however you want to see it within that crop. So I liked how I had it originally, so I'm going to put it back there. And that feels really good to me. So I'm going to group that along with that square so I don't lose the square, duplicate this one, and flatten the copy. Tap on the layer thumbnail, choose flatten. Now we have this one all on its own and ready to use. And everything else that we've done is just extra if we ever want to tweak it or change it or adjust it in the future. So I'm going to grab this top group and drag it down beneath the square that I'm going to be using for all of my artwork and turn off the other group. So the only thing I have visible right here is this flattened watercolor image. Now what we want to do is come back into our gallery view and we're going to create a duplicate of this file that we were just working in. So slide it over to the left and choose duplicate. Once you have the duplicate, tap on that. We can remove these groups, we don't need them anymore. Now what we're going to do is grab our artwork square and we're going to tuck it right into the bottom left corner. So select it and drag it all the way down until it sits nice and pretty in that bottom left corner. Next, we're going to hit the wrench, canvas, crop and resize, settings, and we're going to change the settings to 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels and you can see it'll crop right and tight nicely around it then, and then you can hit done. Okay, so now we've got our artwork and it's all ready to go. First, I wanna show you how you can recolor this super easily. I always like making a copy, that way I can have the pretty color that I originally made, and then I can have additional options. So on the duplicate layer, I can just come up to the magic wand, hue, saturation, brightness, and you can really easily change the color of your artwork. So this is more of like, changing the color within one color family here. If you wanna do something different, I'll show you another way you can do it. Um, on this duplicate, you can go the magic wand and then gradient map, and there's a bunch of presets down here, so you can select from there and you can get some variations in color. Um, you can also alter it however you would like, like this one at the end, this mocha, I've adjusted before, so it gives me some different color variation. If you wanna adjust it further, you just tap into it and then you can tweak where these colors are. So if I want more orange in here, I can just push these ones around. And you can change the color too. I can just tap on this and change the color of it if I want something else. So that's how to do that. There we go, we've got another version of it. I'm going to duplicate the original and we'll do yet another one. So with this one, come to your magic wand and then choose color balance. So I can change some of the colors. If you tap on this little icon over here, you can adjust the shadows, midtones, or highlights. If it doesn't look like anything's changing, it means that your artwork has probably more midtones or highlights if you're on shadows. So I've got midtones selected. So if I just change some of these, you can see things are starting to change now. And this will give you more variation in the color of your artwork instead of it all being like one hue of blue or one hue of red. Um, so that gives you a lot more flexibility. Or if you just want to make some you know, minor tweaks to what you've got. Okay, so that would be another 
colorway option if I wanted. If you'd like to learn more about creating messy watercolor artwork in Procreate, then check out my brand new course, Messy Watercolors in Procreate. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. So let's come back to the original. I want to show you really quickly a really easy way that you could use this on social media. You could just write a message right on top. One of my favorite things is creating like little Polaroids and I've got a Polaroid maker kit that I will link to, but I can show you a way to do this really easily. You just grab white, you grab your selection, choose rectangle, and you can just drag out a rectangle, fill it with white, and then I can just plan it right in the middle here. I'm going to create a brand new layer, change my color to black, and then head into my Polaroid Maker Kit. And I've got a bunch of shadows down here. So I'm going to grab shadow number three and just stamp it in. And I'm gonna line it up to the sides and drag it underneath my paper. And now it looks like my paper's floating. I can change this to multiply, tap it up a little bit. And then I'm going to add, let's add like a pink tape. So I'm gonna grab hot pink and there's some tapes that you can choose from. I'll grab tape five and then just stamp it on. And then you can write whatever message you'd like on here. I'm gonna create a brand new layer and I'll grab my orange and I'll head into my beautiful lettering brush set and grab my Inky Pro brush. And you can use any lettering brush that you'd like here. That's just my favorite. And then write whatever you want. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.